This gadget squeezes out mincemeat to make your own sausages. They traditionally call them a shvapshishi, and they originate from Southeast Europe. And we'll also see what other foods we can make with this gadget as well. To start with, I need to make the sausage mix, and it's going to contain caramelised onions. So I'm going to use this kitchen mandolin to cut it up into nice fine pieces. It's really cool, it comes with various different attachments, and because I want my onion nice and finely cut, I'm removing this cutting blade, and I'm swapping it out for this one. It just slots in, and locks in place. Then sit the onion on top, and push down on the lid. How cool is that? Instant finely cut onions. And of course, you can use it to cut or grate all sorts of foods. Link in the description if you want to buy one. To caramelise the onions, I'm taking a pan and warming up some oil. Then start frying off the onions. When they start to become a bit soft, I'm adding in a teaspoon of muscovado sugar and letting it melt down to caramelise a little. To make sure they don't burn, you do need to stir them a bit. Next, we're going to use this gadget to press some garlic. Open up the box and we've got this nice, sturdy metal garlic press. It also comes with a little cleaning brush and this silicon tube to help us remove the skin. I'll show you how it works. Put inside a couple of cloves, then use your hand to push down on the top and roll it back and forth along the chopping board. After a few seconds, you can just tip them out and you should find all the skin is loose and easy to pick off. Now let's try the garlic press. It's got this nice sturdy handle and you just push down straight on top of the garlic. If you need to, you can kind of rock it back and forth a little or wipe it up and down over the chopping board to help push it all through. Oh, and look at that. Yeah, it's actually worked really well. And what's really nice about this gadget is because you don't even need to touch the garlic, it means your hands don't smell. You can literally just use a knife to scrape it off the back. Huh, that's really cool. Next, I'm going to use this gadget to chop up some herbs for our sausage mix. Take it out of the box and this is what we've got. It fits in your hand quite comfortably, and it's got these six cutting discs all together, which we just roll back and forward over the herbs. For cleaning and things, you can fold down this flap and remove the whole assembly. If you really need to, you can completely dismantle it, taking off each one of the spacers and the cutting discs. I'm going to try it out on this handful of fresh coriander. Just roll it back and forward up and down the chopping board, and within a matter of seconds, it's cut it all up nice and finely. That really is simple and so effective. To pad out our mixture a little bit, I'm going to make some fresh bread crumbs. So take a piece of white bread, tear it up a little, and place it in a blender jug. Give it a whiz. <laughs> and there we go, instant bread crumbs. If you've got a blender, they're so easy to make yourself at home. So we're ready to make our mix. Take a large bowl, and I'm adding in one kilogram of pork. I think traditionally you can use all sorts of meat, including beef, lamb and chicken, and even mixing some of them together. Next I added over the breadcrumbs, I actually blended two slices of bread. Then I'm tipping in my caramelised onions, scraping in our crushed garlic, and don't forget the fresh herbs too. If you like, you can always add some dried herbs as well. Here I'm adding in a little bit of dried thyme, and then season it with salt and pepper. I'm using this fun dual grinder with these sort of ratchet handles that you just squeeze at the top. Once it's nicely seasoned, I added 50 millilitres of water, then started mixing it up. You want to really kind of knead it together to make sure it's all nicely combined. So we're now ready to take our sausage press. It's a cool design actually. It's got like a set of plungers inside a plunger. And once you've squeezed out all of the meat, you push these two bits here with your thumbs, and it should extend these seven little plungers to push out the last bits of meat. Pretty cool, huh? And before we use it, I'm giving the inside a little spray with some oil. Rub it around to make sure it's all well coated, then fill it up with a sausage mix. Try to make sure there's no air bubbles. And once it's all full, you can just place the plunger back in. And I'm going to try squeezing them out onto this plate. Oh wow, check that out. It takes no time at all. And we've got seven instant sausages. They do seem to hold together pretty well to be honest. You can see as I move them, they don't just fall apart. But let's see how well they cook. I think traditionally you might cook them on a grill, but I'm going to do them in this pan. So I placed them all in and cooked them on a medium heat, turning them occasionally like you would with any sausage. They're smelling really nice and once they were cooked all the way through, I served them while they're hot. I'm just having them on a plate with a bit of ketchup and mustard for a dip. And if I start cutting into this one, even though there's no sausage skin on it, it really does hold together well. Inside you can see the little bits of caramelised onion and the herbs, and when I taste it, 
Mmm, that's delicious. It's a really meaty and wholesome texture. I'd say this gadget works really well with mincemeat. What flavour sausage would you make? Now if we have a look at the box, it says you can also use it to make croquettes and gnocchi. Let's try croquettes. To start with, I put a bunch of cold boiled potatoes into a bowl, ready to mash. I'm using this really funky spiral masher. You may have seen me use it before, I do really like this gadget. You just place it over the top of the potato and push down and it all kind of squidges up through the gadget. I'll show you how it works in a little bit more detail on this single potato. Place it over the top and push down, and there we go. Instant mash. And once we've done the whole bowl full, I'm adding some seasoning, salt, and pepper. Then I'm giving it one more mash to mix it all in. The first time I tried this, I also added some butter and grated cheese into the mix, but it didn't quite go to plan. I'll show you what happened in a minute. But once you've thoroughly mashed it, wrap a cover over it and place it in the fridge for half an hour to cool down. While it's chilling, we're going to get things ready to add the coating. Place out three bowls, and in the first one tip in a little bit of flour, crack an egg into the second one, and beat it all together, I'm using a fork, and in the third one we need to tip in some bread crumbs. Once your mashed potato is nice and cold, it's ready to use. You do need to make sure it's nice and workable, we don't want it to stick. You can see after handling this, there's none left behind on my fingers. So we're ready to take the gadget again, squirt in a little oil and rub it around to coat it, then fill it up with a potato. Again, try not to get any air bubbles. Place the plunger back in and it's ready to go. I'm going to squeeze them out onto this bamboo chopping board. Apply a nice even pressure to the plunger as you slowly draw the gadget backwards. Ha! <laughs> and we got seven potato rolls. Then carefully handle them and place them all alongside each other. And I'm using a knife to cut them into thirds. Some of them may need a little bit of reshaping, but generally they've come out really well. So the next stage is to coat them. We need to roll it in the flour, then dunk it in the egg, making sure it's coated all the way around, and finally roll it around in the breadcrumbs. Try to get a good even coating, and check it out, it's looking really good. You could deep fat fry these, but I'm going to be baking them in the oven. And because it does get quite messy on your fingers, I found it's best to do a load each stage at a time. So I covered a load in flour, then moved them over into the egg. This bit can be a little bit tricky and slimy. Then I placed them all into the breadcrumbs. And it's here where your fingers really do get messy. Because your fingers have still got egg on them, the breadcrumbs stick all over you as well. I loaded them all onto the tray, leaving a bit of space in between them. And for the final lot, I rolled them individually in the flour, then placed them into the egg without getting my fingers sticky. Then I did the sticky bits all together, and when they were all coated, sat them onto the breadcrumbs. Then I washed my hands and just sprinkled more breadcrumbs over the top. I also gave them a good gentle shake around, and they pretty much all coated themselves. This way I kept my hands pretty clean, put them on the tray, now they're ready to bake. I place them into the middle of the oven on a medium temperature for about 15 to 20 minutes. And while they're baking, I'll show you another method I found for making the croquettes. Once you've filled up the gadget, if you see any starting to ooze out, you can take a knife blade and slice them all off flush. And in the same way, to make the croquettes, you can just squeeze out a small length and use your knife to slice them off at the right length. I arranged them on the chopping board, then did another batch exactly the same way. You should have enough to squeeze out a third section too. There we go, that's really cool. And after about 20 minutes, I took them out of the oven, and they're looking great. But I did notice one or two of them had developed a crack in the coating. Any idea why? Did I leave them in the oven for a bit too long? But next I arranged them out onto a plate, and I'm serving them with some sweet chilli dipping sauce. The outside is lovely and crispy. You can see the hot mashed potato. Add a little bit of dipping sauce. Oh, look at that! And they taste delicious. I have heard if you add a little bit of oil into the breadcrumbs, it can crisp up the outside even more and make them beautifully golden. Is that true? Have you tried it? But next I want to show you what happened when I tried adding some butter into the mix, and some grated cheese. I thought it might be really nice to try adding some additional flavour to the croquettes. I kneaded it all together so it was lovely and smooth, but because both the new ingredients had a high fat content, it made the mixture incredibly sticky. <laughs> you can see it was stuck all over my fingers, and scooping it into the gadget was really messy. When I squeezed them out, well, they looked okay. But when I tried to move them and separate them, they just weren't holding their own form. I couldn't pick them up or roll them, it was a real sticky mess. In this video, I try recipes from the Coca-Cola cookbook, and I get some really interesting results, so click on the link if you want to see. Or you might like to take a look at some of my other videos. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching!